Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna go through the process of actually designing a simple thing with a uh, in 3D so we can 3D print it. And designing things that are meant for 3D printing. Uh, because if your design is such that, you know, uh, you got impossible overhangs, you're printing stuff in mid space, stuff like that, uh, not very congenial to 3D printing. So you have to actually design things with 3D printing in mind. And this is a very, very simple design over here, but it involves taking some notes. Otherwise, you're going to make mistakes and end up 3D printing more than once, which is okay because it is a prototyping machine, but sometimes you can get production stuff out of it. And uh, one of the things that I want to do is I want to make basically holders for these a AXA style tool posts. Um, well, tool holders for uh, my lathe. And um, this is actually a nice little tool holder. And this is, you know, it. Okay, it's not the highest grade stuff around, but it's nice for my home shop. So there's a few things that we need to take into consideration, which is one of them is the slot itself and what these dimensions here are. Right? So one of the things that I highly recommend is getting a decent caliper that has a fresh battery in it because if you're like me most of these are import calipers and uh, the batteries have basically when the batteries start running low you'll start either reading over or under what it's supposed to read and that's 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 not good it never is good you always end up with errors all sorts of crap so that not something you want to do so first things first let's measure out the top and uh, we're right at around 34 millimeters. So take that, mark that down. 34. The bottom of the slot. And again, this doesn't need to be that precise because it's just a holder. It's not uh, something that I basically, uh, it's not something that needs to be bang on to the hundreds of or even tenths of a millimeter as long as it's within a millimeter it should be fine and it seems to be 41.4 the bottom part right and then the, the actual slot itself how wide is it and again I'm not going crazy here I just I want to go from the tip to the edge, which is about 8.6, and the height of this, 38, so we'll make the height 40. I have chicken scratch writing, but that's okay. That's what notepad scratch pads are for. And uh, the width of this whole thing, because it would actually be nice to know what this is actually doing. And this is 27.64, so we'll call it 28. And we'll round the closest mill because this is not something that we really really need to look into 76.5 so try it 77 and uh, we have this profile basically in that direction done all measured out so next over I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna design things in SketchUp because well this is pretty simple and I don't really need to go through Fusion to do a design like this. All right?
since my machine sounds like a jet and uh, I've, so, I've sliced this um, I'm making it strong so this is actually designed that I can mount it either straight or on the back we'll see how it works out when I have them at the lathe but I'm printing out the first one so I'm going to save it to the SD card and let's eject the SD card alright let's prepare the machine Card is inserted. I'm gonna run prepare. Preheat for ABS. So 100 degrees for the bed, 250 for the hot end. Being that this machine is I used it last to make some gears. It uh, needs a bit of a cleanup. So, let's clean it up. I'm only printing out one of these right now. And yes, it's 100% infill. I actually like printing out strong things. And I know it may be a bit of a waste to print it out 100% infill and not knowing if it fits or not. But that's that's the thumbs the brakes and the bed takes a while to heat up so I'm not burning my hands here and I still run out of glass bed I'll vacuum out the 3d printer at some point I run a razor blade to actually clean out this whole thing had pretty good luck doing it this way however you do it your mileage may vary and I usually wait until the bed is actually nice and warm before I put the goop on top yes I still print with goop I know people using uh, are using much newer methods um, fact of the matter is I actually like printing with goop it recycles some of my plastic and uh, leaves a pretty decent finish. Sandable finish at that. So, not a big deal. So, let's wait for this thing to heat up into the 60 70 Celsius range and then we'll take it from there. So, the printer made it to about 85 centigrade and it's getting nice and warm. And uh, what I use is I use a metal putty knife. I've used the plastic ones before, it's just become a pain in the butt to clean up afterwards. So, this is it, and I slather it on. As simple as that. I, I have my printer tweaked so I can actually lay a pretty thick layer of this stuff on there. And it doesn't have to be... perfect it'll still print the trick to this is a lot of people I've never explained myself is the trick to this is when you lay goop like this when it's hot not when it's cold when it's hot um, the the acetone inside of the goop is evaporating right away so what's happening is the actual plastic is hardening right away and it's um, it's actually becoming porous like if you feel this out it actually feels porous it feels kinda rough which is perfect for the 3D printer and being that this thing is basically ready I'm gonna start the print and uh, I'll put you guys on time lapse
Well, it's done. Let's see if it fits. A little tight. That is a, it's a hell of a fit. I wonder, I don't want to break this. Well, I figured I'd show you guys this. Um, this is finally done. I have the design down packed. And uh, I'll tell you what happened. First time I designed it, I got a dovetail in backwards. So obviously this doesn't fit. Second time, I measured too precisely and this thing is just basically a press fit. I don't need that. So I tweaked the design once more and I got this very nice no play fit on there. And it actually, I'm very happy with this. Now that it's cooled down, it's actually a perfect fit. Just a very, very nice fit. You can hear it literally snapping. And this is just, uh, I'm very happy with this. And uh, I'll show you what the design is like. I can, I have two mounting options. That's why there's two sets of mounting holes. I can mount it this way with these uh, holes existing here and I have them pre uh, countersunk so I can actually use one inch uh, drywall screws to mount this or I can mount it this way and also use the same one inch drywall screws so I can either mount these holders this way and then just drop them in or I can mount them this way and put them in like I said everything in my life seems to be a Goldilocks kind of deal you know first time is way wrong second time is a little bit better and the third time is spot on so that's there are times that I get it right on the first try and there are times I get it right on the second try and there are times I need to try it five or six times so so Murphy strikes again uh, while printing out the second one of these I um, I didn't wait for the bed to cool down enough and I just yanked it off by a force so I broke the bed on my 3D printer so I can't print any more of them I need five more but with that said at least the design is actually functional and I have the first couple on there so I'm happy with that and we can conclude the video that way um, the fit and the finish is actually pretty darn good right out of the printer so no post processing necessary nothing uh, please subscribe comment do whatever just interact with me subscription below bye guys